Say, neighbor, welcome to the presence of God. You are going to mark this day if you believe. Say, I mark this day. Today, the end of your trouble has come if you believe. Say, thank you, Jesus. Say, neighbor, worry not. Encourage your neighbor. Say, neighbor, worry not. Worry, 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 worry. Who can separate us from the love of Jesus? Can I worry? Worry about the future. Worry about your health. Worry about your wage. Oh, I'm too fat. Worry about your family, your children. Worry about your responsibilities at work. We all experience worries. Even the greatest heroes of faith, Abraham, Moses, David, Peter, Paul, they have their own share, their own moment of worry and mistakes. Abraham, the father of faith, failed God when he fled to Egypt during the time of drought. Moses, the great prophet, he lost his temper and turned to violence more than once. David, a man after God's own heart, he committed murder and adultery. Simon Peter, one of the greatest apostles of Jesus, he denied Jesus three times. But God used them, despised their failure. God Almighty helped them to make the most of their difficulties. And even more, God used them, used their failures to bring them to the place where God wants them to be. Let someone say, God's way are not our ways. As you are here sitting down because of your problem, if not that problem, will you be here today? Let someone say, God's ways are not our ways. God will not give us to do that which we know how to do. God always gives us to do things that we don't know how to do so he can teach us how to do them and how we can be trained and reformed to embrace the way of the Lord. Let someone say, the way of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, the way of the Lord. This brings us to our message today, the way of the Lord. I will take my proof reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 55. Read along with me from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 55 from verse 8. The Lord says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Verse 10. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bed, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11, last verse. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Let someone say the way of the Lord. God is spirit. So the natural man, the man of the mind and intellect, cannot understand the ways of the Lord, nor receive the things of the spirit. That's what I say, the man of the mind, the man of the intellect, cannot understand the ways of the Lord, nor receive the things of the Spirit. 
Failing to understand God's way, many run to alternatives rather than God. Some go to visit which doctor because of trouble. When you know the position of God in your trouble, in your problem, you will depend on God's ability and power rather than, rather than man's majority. Let someone say, God's authority is final. Say, when you know God's position in your problem, you will depend on God's authority and power. God's authority is final. But unfortunately today, the majority of us today are blind to the spiritual cause. Majority of us are blind spiritually. We are dull in comprehension. The unseen realm around us completely closed to our spiritual vision. Let's time I say the way of the Lord. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 13 says that the message of the cross, the message of salvation is foolishness for those who perish. But for us who believe, the power of God unto salvation. Let's say the way, the, the way of the cross. The way of the cross is not the way of man. But it was Christ's way to bring redemption, salvation to humankind. Jesus, foreseeing his coming hour of suffering, his crucifixion, his death on the cross, and his resurrection, he informed Simon Peter in Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 to 22. The Lord said to them, but Peter, his natural feelings provoked an emotional reaction. He said to Jesus, no, God forbid, far be it from you. This cannot happen to you. Far be it from you. These are sweet words, words of sympathy. But Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan. For you think like man thinks, not like God thinks. Such was the rebuke Simon Peter received from Jesus by failing to look at the situation from God's point of view. When we are troubled, we enter into the same trap today. Why? Worry about your situation. Worry and fear destroy our sense of judgment. And it cripples our ability to think, to act, and to exercise faith during trying times. Say neighbor, worry not. Say neighbor, fear not. Worry not. Worry not. God's way God's are not the way of man. Jesus, knowing that, he warned Peter and prayed for him so that his faith would not fail. But when the hour of Peter's temptation came, when Jesus was arrested, Peter denied Jesus three times because he was gripped, overwhelmed by fear. Let's say the way of the cross is the path of faith and humility. Are you sick today? Do you have a sickness that threatens your life and you think there is no way out? Remember Job. Job followed the path of faith and humility. Job knew in the dark moment of his suffering. Job knew there was something far more important than the sickness. That was God's purpose in his life. Satan tempted him through sickness to deny God. But Job never did. Let someone say, outward burden, affliction, sickness, trouble are Satan's 
greatest arguments to cause the people of God to doubt their sonship. Job never did. Those who have a clear purpose in their lives, those who have a sense of destiny, no matter what comes, no matter what happens to you, you will recognize the mighty hand of God in both good and hard times. And you will have room in your heart to bless God, even if it takes away. If that child passed away, you bless the name of the Lord. If you are sacked, bless the name of the Lord. If trouble come, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let someone say the way of the Lord. Let someone say the way of the Lord. Job was a man after God's own heart. He was a man who had a greater understanding of the way of God. And he never saw his God in a bad light. Despite the suffering. Because Job was completely committed to God. God was willing to take up all of Satan's challenges against him. And he overcame. Let someone say, I am an overcomer. I want you to talk to the devil. Say, you devil. No matter the circumstance. No matter the troubles. I know you are a defeated foe. You know it. And I know it. Today is my victory. If you believe it, give thanks to Jesus. So, as a Christian, what is your situation today? Whatever situation you find yourself in today, don't be too quick to grumble without finding out God's purpose. In that situation. When trials come. When challenges come. Are you tempted with injustice? Does someone lie against you? Accuse you wrongly? Or attack come? How will you respond? Say neighbor, how will you respond? If you don't know the principle of life that says, nothing happens for nothing. You are bound to act negatively. And to react to the pressure. Say neighbor, if you don't know the principle of life. When attack come, you attack back. It is because we are quickly minded to judge, to blame. To be in self-pity and to fight back. It is not our challenge, our situation that makes us to fall. God sometimes allows situations to happen to our lives for a purpose. Are you sick? Are you in pain? If you have not gone through that pain, who knows what would have happened to you today? Were you on the sick bed? If you have not been through that sick bed, who knows what would have happened to you? Are you jobless? If you are not sacked, who knows what would have happened to you if you have remained in that company today? It is not our challenge that make us to fail, but how we react to them. Say, neighbor, it is not my challenge that makes me to fail, but how I react to that challenge. So when challenges come, bad news come, don't be too quick to respond. Because your response will determine your future. Many have yielded to pressure and tension 
and took wrong, wrong decision. Many yield to pressure and took wrong decision. Many has broken their family, they divorced, quit their company because of pressure and tension. But many other people under the same pressure and tension took the right decision. Say neighbor, if you must respond, think first. Say think first. Your response will determine your future. Remember, a tired mind, a disturbed heart cannot make a good decision. So as people of God, as a man of God, as a true believer, when challenges come, you should find a calm moment to think clearly and react diligently. Say, neighbor, no matter what comes, think first. Find a calm moment to think clearly and react diligently. So in our daily challenges, be it in your business, be it in your home, whatever it is, as a believer, we should not give in to panic. We should be still not give to panic and sit back in silence, in faith, and listen to what God has to say. Because God is still saying something. Say neighbor, God is still saying something. Finally, brethren, today, I don't know what is your situation. I don't know what is your challenge. I don't know where and how you have been handling this situation. But all I know, the Bible says, there is a principle of life. In everything on earth, there is a purpose. Therefore, we need to have a greater understanding of God's way. So you will know that God is aware of your situation. If God is not aware, you will not be here today. When you know that God is aware of your situation, you will cry no more. You will worry no more. Because there is the unseen hand of God behind the every affair of any man or woman of faith. That unseen hand of God is the one that brought you here. He used foolish things to bring you to his presence. He can use sickness, trouble. Otherwise, today, you might have been somewhere in Dubai, in the beach, and something may happen to you. But today, God brought you to his knees to change your life. Say, neighbor, whatever happens, don't be too quick to judge. Don't be too quick to grumble. You might be under God's process. To reshuffle your life for the best which is yet to come. God Almighty works through our circumstances in order to help us to grow. God sometimes in his wisdom puts us in the dark so we might appreciate the light when it comes. I believe today the light has come for you. Say neighbor the light has come for me. Say, the way out for me has come. My healing has come. My breakthrough has come. My salvation has come. May God bless his word. Thank you, Jesus.